What's this? Is it a Tissot? All right, I don't think it is. I can't remember actually buying a Tiso, so I don't think it is, but we'll find out. <clears throat> I think it's going to be my semi-favorite watch brand. I think you guys all know what that is. I've had so many of them lately. I've had a lot of Vengers, too. It's one of my favorites, but yes, this is not a Tiso. It is going to be a an Ingersoll. Which one? I cannot say for sure because I have three more in a box. Oops, sorry. I have three more other than this to open up. Don't tell my wife. Love these boxes. For anyone where this is your first video you're seeing of mine, I get such a kick out of this. I don't really keep boxes, but how can you not keep these? I mean, this is real wood. And look at this. You know, even this little paper cover is cool. That's to protect this box. All right, let's see what this is. I have no idea. You know, the gray market watch, but here we go. This is very nice. Oh, I think I know what this is. I'm going to be very excited. Very excited. Oh, what's this? Oh, the Linden. This is a fantastic watch. Oh, my gosh. Look at this. Oh, man. Who in their right mind would not want a watch like this? Oh, this is just absolutely fantastic. This is just spectacular. And it's dead. But I'll rectify that. All right, let's watch this quick video.
All right, I hope you liked that great video because I am pumped now for this watch. So I took a little bit closer look at it. This is the, the Linden. And the MSRP, I believe, was $7.95 for this one. Now, uh, I misspoke when I said that it was broken. It's not broken. I figured, oh my God, here we go. Typical gray market watch, dead battery, cloudy crystal, all that stuff. And it may have a crowded, uh, cloudy crystal. I'm not sure. Uh, but I'm going to open Oh, yeah, it does. Okay. Give me a minute and I'll clean it. All right, let's uh, try this again. Uh, look at this magnificent watch uh, now that it has been post-cleaned. Uh, note the time difference. That's how long it took me. Uh, I don't know because I didn't count, but this apparently was because it didn't stop. Um, and I forgot to take a picture of the movement. Damn it. All right, that's okay. No problem. Take it apart again. All right, um, so... Where were we? We were talking about movements. Take a look at this and then compare here. Where's my finger? Compare right there to what it looked like in the shot before. And you can see gray market. Now, the MSRP for this watch was $795. And it is a fantastic watch. I cannot emphasize this enough. Um, this is not the limited edition one. The limited edition one actually comes in a nicer box. Comes with a couple other cool things. I will try to see if I can find a picture of that. Um, but it is very cool. And I will put that picture right there if I can find it. But um, back again on this. This is $795 watch. Obviously, some of them are going for cheaper. I got this gray market. I'm not going to tell you what I paid. Um, I think it's bad form. Uh, okay, I will. I think I paid like $150. But look at what I've done for it right um it took me however many minutes that was and uh i now have a perfect watch so first off it was not dead because it is in fact a automatic movement super nice um did not realize that i thought it was another battery one but it is an automatic and it just hadn't been wound uh, it's actually been sitting for a while i've had this one for quite some time and i just haven't bothered to open it but this is a fantastic watch, and I can't emphasize this enough. I'm not going to go into too much detail about the specifics of the watch until after I do the movement video. You guys all know, but I did want to talk about um, what this watch represents. So again, I'm going to pop up another picture right here. And right there, you're going to see what the this movement is an, an homage to. And I don't really want to call it an homage, but perhaps a reissue. The original wrist radio light by Ingersoll. This is the new version of that. And it is it was a fantastic watch back in the day. Um, there's a little bit of history about why it's called the radio light, and I'll go into that. Uh, but this is a vintage uh, vintage brass look, weathered brass. And um, from the pictures that you had seen, it is basically identical. This is a much larger case, obviously, than, than what used to be presented in the original radio light. Um, why it's called the radio light is that it used radium. And for those who have not seen the history or read the entire history of the uh, rad radium girls, there is an excellent write-up, and I will put a link to that uh, story, a uh, written history on uh, the radium girls. But essentially, unfortunately, many of them died. Uh, radium, of course, is uh, radioactive. It, it is a um, radioactive element, and it was used on the loom, and it, it provided for spectacular loom. I, I will. I mean, it, it, for what it did, it worked excellent. And to some extent, there's also a problem where if you service old watches like I do, you just have to be a little bit careful about um, some of these older watches. Let me see if I can find an old one that I got somewhere around here, but... A lot of them used to come with radium. Um, I don't really have any that I see in front of me here, but a lot of these older watches that I have... Yeah, here's one. Here's a good one. What is this? Uh, this is a West Clock. This is a vintage West Clock, and this, in fact, has radium in it. So, obviously, what I want to do is I don't want to open this up and lick it. Uh, so that would be first recommendation, um, is that I don't lick the face. But... Obviously, there's more to it than that. Um, 
the radium girls worked really hard and one of the things that they used to do is they would lick the tips of the the brushes and before they would dip it into the loom and that's how they ended up ingesting radium and uh, it doesn't take much and basically they all died of cancer unfortunately um, but aside from that uh, it was a pinnacle moment in watch history and it was when some of the earlier wrist watches were starting to, I'm sorry, the earlier pocket watches were being put on the wrist. And one of the first was the Ingersoll Radiolite wrist. And that's what this is in, uh, a replication of. And it is a fantastic watch. I mean, I cannot emphasize that enough. This is a great watch. Um, before I go into any of the specifics, let's go ahead and talk about this, this wonderful movement. And it is a great movement. Uh, but I want to go into a little bit more detail and then we'll go back to talking about the watch. This movement is a special in-house modified version built from Seagull TY2806 movement parts. Ingersoll typically purchases the parts from Seagull for these movements and then assembles them with specific non-standard components. This includes features such as blued screws, specialty finished plates, and a custom name etched weight. The TY2806 automatic movement itself is based on the Japanese Miyota 8215 movement using the winding mechanism similar to Seiko's auto winding magic lever system. This provides modern yet simple and efficient full-sized wrist watch caliber. Ingersoll further improves on this with a cost-effective high quality design with their IN619 automatic movement. All right, uh, now that you've seen the video, let's just go into a couple things so I can clear this out um, because I realized that I got really excited and had to take care of some things. So I I uh, um, forgot to clean up my mess here. Um, first, I just want to talk a little more about the gray market. I really, I'm really interested to know what you guys think. Um, please discuss in the comments on whether or not you think buying gray market is worthwhile seeing some of the things that i've gone through some of the videos that i've had to uh where i've had to kind of go back and, and fix some of the watches it's not just ingersoll right it, ingersoll is just one of the brands that uh, is very popular among gray market there's also wenger um some of the other ones and when you get um when you get gray market there's usually a lot of things that you end up having to do more and more as i buy them i realize that they're just not off the shelf ready but uh, please discuss, and I'm interested to think what you guys, I'm interested to hear what you guys think. All right, so back on this box, excellent box. I mean, this is solid wood. It's not dovetail, but, you know, they, they, the presentation is spectacular. Um, it comes with this little certificate of authenticity. It is a solid plate. Um, there's not much to it. It's just a neat little thing. You can make it a paperweight on your desk if you want. Uh, I don't know how many fancy offices are windy, I suppose, if you've got big fan on it. And this is the, the manual <clears throat> lifetime warranty. As of 2016, all Ingersolls have full lifetime warranty. Um, spectacular. It's all part of this whole packaging that they have. And, and, and honestly, I mean, I get such a great deal on these watches. And these really are just fantastic watches. Um, so I'll get this out of the way so we can move on to the watch. That's why you're here. So for those who had the opportunity to... <clears throat> If you paid attention during the movement video, you would find that it is the exact same one that I used for this other radio light, and I will put the um, review for that right up here. Should shoot across, but uh, this is a fantastic watch. Also, I really like this watch, and uh, it also uses the same movement as you can see. And this is this is their brass. Uh, I'm sorry, bronze, and there's no patina on it because I keep it inside. But uh, this will eventually patina. It's a very nice bronze watch, but that's not why you're here. <clears throat> um, all right, so first things first. Crystal, this is solid sapphire. This is one of the few Ingersolls that has solid sapphire crystals. It is a fantastic crystal. Very clear. I like it. It is excellent scratch resistance. The watch itself has a weathered bronze look. And it has the old-timey crown. Uh, which is spectacular. You can wind it. It is not a screw drown because that wasn't the thing, but you would typically use this to wind it. You don't necessarily need to because it's an automatic, but it works quite well. Also supports a hacking feature, which if... What? No, I guess not. Okay. Interesting. 
the other one does. That's pretty wild. It's the same movement. Let's see that for a minute. No. Okay. <clears throat> All right, no hacking feature. There we go. I was almost positive the other one does. Um, I thought they were the same movements. That's pretty interesting. wonder how they did that. All right, well, is it, this is a no frills, no frills movement, no date, no hacking, just basic balanced foam and jewels, same case. Um, stainless steel case with a, with a weathered look. Um, it is a 10 atmosphere water resistance. That's 10 ATM, uh, 10 bar, 100 meters. I'll show the chart right up there. As you know, you can go snorkeling in it. You can um, swim. You can do the dishes. You can wash your hands. You can jump in the pool, take a shower with it. Uh, but I'm not sure you'd want to do that because <clears throat> this has a really nice Horween leather. Now, Horween is a fantastic leather company. They're the oldest continuous um, continuous tannery, uh, continuously operating tannery in the United States. They've been doing it for over 100 years. And, and I will tell you, this strap is fantastic. This is probably one of the best um, Ingersoll uh, Horween leather straps that I've I've had on any of the watches. Um, this one's also a Horween, and it just feels better. Honestly, I mean, you know, the color's different, but this one just has such a nice, rich feel to it. I think they call this uh, Havana because uh, it looks like cigars. <clears throat> but um, a very old company. They've been around for a long time. They've been, been producing uh, leathers for quite some time. Fantastic brand, uh, and, and I like it. Back on the watch again, too. Um, it's signed everywhere because they are very proud of their name. <clears throat> I don't believe it's at all because they have an identity crisis. Um, it's stamped on there. It's on the back. It's on the face. It's on the strap. Um, it's even on the side. It's just absolutely excellent watch. I can't say say enough about it. I'm so glad I bought this. I don't know what I'm going to do with two. One is bronze. One is weathered brass. So I don't know. I guess I'm going to keep them both. Um, God forbid. I don't know what I'm going to do with them. But this is a fantastic watch, and I'm really glad I got it. Uh, please leave any comments below. Oh, gosh, where am I going? Got to do a loom shot. All right, let's do a loom shot. <clears throat> wow, that is fantastic. That absolutely looks great. I love that. All right, let's do some measurements real quick. I forgot to do that. This is a pretty big case. 46 millimeter case, it's quite big, but it looks good. 24 millimeter uh, lug and a 15 millimeter depth. So if you have any questions, please leave them below. If you have any comments, also leave those below. Uh, any recommendations for watches you think I should look at under $750, preferably under $300, because then I can get them, get them much sooner. Um, uh, please leave that below. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and please leave a like. And I really appreciate your patronage. Thank you very much.